and welcome back to the Girly Girl Bookworm. So today I have my October, November, and December wrap up. I figure because I haven't seen you guys since October, I would let you know everything that I've read. Obviously there's a ton of books so I won't be able to go into extreme complete detail about them, but I figured I'd at least give you my star rating for them so that way you knew exactly what I've read. Also it just kind of holds me accountable, it keeps me track of what I've read. Um, some of the books that I've read I've already since unhauled, so if I've unhauled them I will post a picture of what they looked like. Um, so let's just dive in because this can be really long if I don't. Um, so in October I read 14 books. Um, I listened to two on audio. Um, the first book that I read was Room 553 by Brittany King. I've already unhauled it. I gave it three stars. It wasn't a bad read, but it was not something that I was going to reread again, and it wasn't what I anticipated it to be, so I pretty much sold it almost right away after reading it. Same thing with The Library of the Unwritten. I gave it two stars. I was really anticipating this one, especially after seeing how much Riley from Riley and Marie read. Um, reads. Is that her full name? I think it's just Riley Murray. Um, she raved about this book earlier in the year and I thought I would love it too. I found it really boring so I gave it two stars and I got rid of it. Then I read um, Good Girls Lie Where is it there? by J.T. Ellison. This book came out. I know it's an ARC copy but I like traded for this copy so I didn't have it as an ARC. This one came out at the end of 2019. I really enjoyed Tear Me Apart, so I was really looking forward to this one, and I ended up giving this one four and a half stars. This one was really good. J.T. Elson writes such great, captivating books that really keep you flipping the pages, but then by the end they do feel a little bit long, so that's why I couldn't give it five stars, but I really, really enjoyed this one. Then I read His Only Wife. Um, this one was a Reese Witherspoon pick. I gave this one three stars. Um didn't really love it. Um, it could have been better. I just, I didn't drive with the character, so I just kind of passed it along. <laughs> then one that completely took me by surprise was Magic Lessons by Alice Hoffman. I gave this one four and a half stars. This is a prequel novel to the Practical Magic books, and I have since bought, um, Rules of Magic and, um, Practical Magic because this one took me by complete surprise. Like I said, I read this one for a read along with Mama Lee Ellen over on Instagram and she had picked this one. I was like, there's no way I'm going to like this one. And I devoured it. It's a little bit slower paced, but it was really, really good. And I'm very happy that I picked this one up. Then I read Mexican Gothic. This one is in my currently to unhaul pile. Nobody has shown any interest in purchasing it over on my Facebook purchase group, so that's why it's still here, so I figured I might as well whip it out for the video. But I gave this one one star. This one was so disappointing. I found it very slow, and by the end I was just really grossed out, and I just felt like the twists were just not what I wanted them to be, and I just I didn't like this one. So it's going to go back into my unhaul pile. Um, and then I listened to Leave the World Behind. I gave this one three stars. I had the um, advanced listening copy through Libro FM. Um, again, I'll leave my Libro FM information down below. This is one of my favorite apps to listen to audiobooks on because um, you could really increase the speed if you want. You know exactly where you are in the book. I love Libro FM, but I gave this one three stars. It was very interesting which made me keep listening to it but then it has a really like non-definitive ending and it just kind of felt like there was so much left unknown and unsaid and I think that was the whole point but like I thought when I when I saw it marketed I thought it was marketed as a thriller so I went into it anticipating that and then it wasn't a thriller so three stars just was a book again I listened through um, Libro FM for it, so I never owned a physical copy of it, but there's that. Um, with The Fire on High, I gave 3.5 stars. It wasn't as good as I was anticipating. I went into this one with really high expectations. I knew I was going to love the idea of cooking and watching the single mom try to raise her daughter and live her dreams. I was really excited for it, and it just felt a little flat. I didn't really love our main character. I felt like there were times that she really treated other people around her very unfairly and not nicely. And um, 
I did decide to pass this on just because I felt like it could definitely be um, put into better hands and that other readers would definitely appreciate it more than I would just having a pretty cover on my shelf. So I did end up getting rid of that one. And then I've got The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V. E. Schwab. This is another one that I did a buddy read along with Mama Leelin in her um, book club. And this is another one that I was really anticipating, but like oddly, because this is not my type of book at all. I've never read a V.E. Schwab book before. This was this one kind of came out of left field for me. But again, I am so glad that I picked it up because I also gave this one four and a half stars. I really enjoyed this one. Even though the pacing was really slow, it really worked for this one. Um, and again, I am so glad that I ended up picking this one up because, and for a buddy group read because then we were able to discuss it. And I think that this book is definitely one that needs to be discussed. So again, four and a half stars for that one. Then I read Punching the Air by Evie Zaboy and Yusuf Salam. This was a random purchase that I bought from Target. Um, I didn't anticipate buying this one. I accidentally threw it in a Target cart and I thought I took it out and I didn't. It is a book told in verse or poetry. And um, I was pleasantly, again, surprised by this one. I gave this one four stars. I've never read a book like this before. I've never read a book in this format before. So it was a very pleasant surprise. And I definitely think that if you're a YA reader, you like books set up like that, you're going to like this one. Then I also read... Sorry, I'm just trying to make sure I went in order. Sleep, which I gave four stars to. This one, again, I'm really excited about because I was really anticipating it. I thought it was going to be really good. And then it sat on my shelf for so long because I had started to see really negative things about it. And I was like, oh no, I'm not going to like it. But pleasantly surprised, I really did. Four stars. Then I read White Guilt by Shelby Steele. This is the one that I started back in August and then never finished, but I finished it in October. Um, I don't write nonfiction. I do feel like this one is a little bit dated. This one came out in 2000. Six. So I felt like it was a little bit dated and um, it, I still found things that I was able to take out of it but a lot of it did go over my head a bit and it just wasn't great. This was in my on haul pile but I pulled it out for this video. Then the last one that I read in October was His and Hers by Alice Feeney. I listened to this one also through the ALC, ALC program with Libro FM. I really enjoyed this one. I gave this one four stars. It was creepy. It was cringy. I, for a while, wasn't sure what I was going to rate it. And then at the end, I was like, I have to give this one four stars. So highly recommend that one. And then in November, I also read 14 books. Three of them were on audio, and I read three through Kindle. Um, I started with Crush by Tracy Wolf. I gave this one four stars. I didn't love this one as much as Crave. This is the sequel to Crave. Um, Covet comes out in March and I can't wait for it. This is a paranormal series that I am just devouring. Then I read The Half Sister by Sandy Jones. I had a, um, Kindle copy through NetGalley for this one and I liked it. I gave it three stars. I didn't love it as much as her, the first mistake. I really enjoyed the first mistake so I was really excited to pick this one up knowing that this was her newest release and it just didn't really do it for me so unfortunately three stars. Then I listened to The Boyfriend Project. I used to own it. I DNF'd it because I didn't like reading it physically so I unhauled it and then I remember that I had the audiobook and I had kind of gone through this phase where I was like eating all the audiobooks up. And so I picked it up on the audio through, again, the Libro FM ALC program. And I still ended up giving it three stars. I ended up enjoying the audiobook, but I felt like because I DNF'd it already, I couldn't give it that fourth star because it already didn't hold my attention through reading it physically. So unfortunately, I did give it three stars because of that. Um, and I don't have my copy. Um, I read What You Wish For by Catherine Center. I did read this one through my Kindle because I had a Kindle copy through NetGalley, but obviously I needed this gorgeous copy, so I have the physical copy as well. Um, I did give this one three stars. This was not my favorite Catherine Center book. I felt really let down, especially Things You Save in a Fire is my absolute favorite. So I thought with reading How to Walk Away and then her getting better with Things You Save in a Fire, I thought this one would continue to get better, but unfortunately this one was just 
a three star read for me. Then I read um, Good Night Beautiful. I listened to this one also. You guessed it on audio. And I gave this one three stars. This one is really twisted and confusing. And by the time you get to the end, it wasn't as twisted and as confusing as it could have been. It was weird because it started off so strong, especially if you listen to the audio, it really throws you off. And then by the time you got to the end, it was kind of like, that's it. All that twistiness for nothing. So unfortunately, another three star read. Then I read um, Majesty, which was a four-star read for me. This is the sequel to American Royal, so I can't talk too much about it. I believe, I can't tell if this is the last book or not. It doesn't, it ends, but again, so did American Royal. So I don't know necessarily if there's going to be more. If there's more, I'm going to be reading them. But I definitely think that I liked American Royals a little bit more than I liked Majesty. Then I read Head Over Heels, another one that I read as a Kindle book because I had it through NetGalley, so I decided to read the Kindle version. Um, sometimes the past few months it's just been so much easier to focus on a Kindle book versus a physical book, so that's what I've been trying to do. I've been trying to figure out where my needs are. Um, I gave this one four stars. Um, I think this one's a really important read. It really looks into the gymnast world, um, and there's a little bit of romance in there as well. Then I also read Amina's Voice, which I gave three stars to. This is a middle grade novel, and I just felt like it could have packed a bigger punch than it did. Um, the back talks about this big tragic event, but the big tragic event doesn't really happen until the end of the story. So I just kind of found myself continuing to read, just waiting for that to happen, and it wasn't happening, and it was kind of driving me crazy. So I did give it three stars. I did toy with giving it a fourth star, but I think I'm going to go with three. Then I read um, The Return by Nicholas Sparks, um, and this one is his newest release. It came out in September, and I enjoyed this one as well. I gave this one four stars. I, again, didn't love it as much as I've loved some of his others, but um, it was a very solid Nicholas Sparks book. Um, I read Cobble Hill through Libro FM as well. Um, this one is by the author who wrote Gossip Girl, which I don't think I read in high school. I think I remember I owned one, but I don't think I've ever actually read it or watched the TV show. This audio book was a mess. Um, I gave this one two stars. Um, none of the characters were likable. It made me feel like I had lice the entire time I was reading it. It's very cringy. There's lots of pot smoking, so if you don't like pot and books or in general, or life. You're not going to like this book. I just, I found it very troublesome. There was a woman in there who was pretending to have a disability, and I just, I, could, I, I couldn't, I gave it two stars. Um, I read A Song of Wraith and Ruins with Kendra, and I ended up giving this one three and a half stars. Um, did I ever actually say what we read in October? What did we read in October together? I don't know what we read in October. We read something in October. That's weird. I don't have it written down. I have to look back at that. But we read this one in November. And I gave this one three and a half stars. It was really long. I just found myself being kind of confused with it um, along the way. But it was still a solid read. I don't know. I plan on trying to pick up book two. But we'll see if my interest is still there when book two comes out. I read um, Troubles in Paradise, which I obviously gave five stars to. This is the third and final book in the Winter in Paradise trilogy. Um, again, yeah, like I said, it was a nice ending. Um, I gave it five stars, so I clearly enjoyed it. Sorry, I'm like, now in my head, I'm like really blanking on what Kendra and I read in October. What did we read together in October? Oh, we read When No One Is Watching. I didn't talk about that one. I skipped that one by accident. Okay, back in October, we read When No One Is Watching by Alyssa Cole. And we um, didn't love it as much as we thought we were going to. It was a lot slower. And by the time the ending happened, it like went really fast. And there was a quite a few characters that we didn't really like. I gave it three stars. I've since sold it. I can't believe I missed that one. I was like, I know we read something together. I know we read something together. How did I miss that? 
I forgot to write it down. But we read that in October. We got, um, and then the last book I read in November was The Girls by Abigail Presta. And this is a nonfiction book talking about the doctor who was basically molesting all of the gymnasts. And guys, this is not for the faint of heart. If you, I mean, granted, it gets very graphic. It got way more graphic than I thought it was going to. It was a hard read. It was an intense read. It was such a frustrating read, too, to know how many times this doctor should have gotten caught and didn't get caught because people were covering it up. This was awful. Um, I did think that this one got a bit repetitive um, because he does do pretty much the same thing to all of the girls. That sounds disgusting. But, like, it kept being, like, brought up. And, like, it was literally the same story, the same story, the same story, the same story kind of throughout so it does get a little repetitive, but it was really interesting and really intriguing. But man, this guy got away with so much and it just, it made me scared. Like there were times where he would literally molest girls with their parents in the room and the parents didn't know. And I'm like, as a mother of a little girl, that freaks me out. Okay. Now we're getting on to December, and I read 18 books in December. We're already at 16 minutes for this video, so I'm going to try to go as fast as I can. Um, December was a really great month. We started off with The Perfect Marriage by Geneva Rose. I gave this book five stars. I am literally enforcing and pushing this on everybody. I bought a copy for Kendra. I bought a copy for Shelby. Um, you need to read this. This is an intense thriller. I was so captivated and so... I needed to turn all of the pages, and it was phenomenal, and I gave it five stars. Then I read The Autumn Skies by Denise Hunter. This is the third and final book in the Bluebell Inn series, which, again, got five stars from me, Christian Fiction Romance. I love this little sweet trilogy. So excited. Um, then I read The Adults, which I gave three stars to. This is a holiday read. Um, it takes place in the UK. I just expected a little bit more from it. Um... It did have a mystery element that I wasn't necessarily expecting to be in here, um, which I think saved it a bit. I think if that wasn't there, I probably would have given this two stars. But it was fun. It was cute. I gave it three stars. Um, trying to make sure I go in order. The Hunting Party by Lucy Foley. If you have been following me for a while, you know that The Guest List was one of my favorite reads back in May. This one fell a bit flat, and I gave it four stars. So still, like, not super flat, but, like, in comparison... The guest list was much better than The Hunting Party. Then I read The Christmas Blanket by Candy Steiner. It's a cute little novella, and I don't normally love novellas, but I had to get this one. And guys, I never do this. I gave this one five stars. And why I mean I don't do this is novellas normally don't captivate me enough. And this one, I was sobbing. I was smiling. I was laughing. I want an entire book about this couple because they are phenomenal this was the perfect holiday read. I gave it five stars. This like breaks my heart all over again, like thinking about it. It was so emotional. Then another book that was in my unhaul pile, which I pulled out for you guys today, is The Recipe for a Perfect Wife by Karma Brown. I pre-ordered this last year. It came out the very end of December and it took me all the way till December to read it again. Um, well, not to read it again, to read it for the first time. Um, Hence the sparking of my goal of reading my pre-orders in a timely fashion. This one just did not do it for me. I gave this one two stars. I was expecting a light and fluffy read. This was not light and fluffy. Um, there's there's like kind of like a twist that happens in this that just completely grosses me out and disturbs me and just isn't okay. And I just, I had major problems with this one. I gave it two stars. It's going back in the unhealed pile. After that, I read Arctic Fury with Mama Lee Ellen, and guys, I gave this one five stars. This is a historical fiction that takes place with a group of women who are going to travel in an expedition to Everest. Not Everest. Ugh. The, Ant the Arctic. And they're going on a mission to go find these people who have been missing, and it's a whole women like brigade going up, and we're alternating perspectives of this expedition, and the leader being on... Um, I was going to say on patrol, but it doesn't make sense. She is, she's been since arrested for some of the women not returning with her. 
so she's on trial. That's what I was looking for. She's on trial. So we're following the expedition. We're following her trial. And guys, this one was really good. And I gave it five stars. Then I read, um, oh, not this one yet. I read Every Last Fear, which is a book that comes out in March. I read it through NetGalley, obviously, because it's not out yet. Um, this was a thriller novel that I've been seeing very high praise for and everybody who's been hauling it lately. And I just didn't like it as much. I gave it three stars. I felt like it could have been so much better than it was. Um, we, I think, too, with NetGalley, sometimes they don't always format the books properly before them out and the formatting just made it very disjointed there were so many perspectives to follow I just didn't really ultimately love the twist that much either it just it could have been so much better than it was so unfortunately three stars for me then I read one by one by Ruth Ware you know I've been anticipating this book and I was waiting for a snow day and I got a snow day so I finally got to pick this one up um and this one's not my favorite Ruth Ware video. <laughs> Ruth Ware video. I'm starting to lose my mind. I'm only on video too, and I'm already miscombobulated. This one wasn't my favorite Ruth Ware, but I definitely really still enjoyed it. I know a lot of people aren't loving this one. I didn't love it as much as I wanted to, but I very much felt the atmosphere and the dynamic and the twist. I, again, didn't see coming. It, it, it should have, but I didn't. And then by the end, there was this, like, chase involved, and... I couldn't stop reading fast enough because the pages were just flying by. So it was still good. I just, I think that she has a couple of books that are better. Then I read um, A Princess for Christmas by Jenny Holiday. I read this one with Kendra for our monthly buddy read. And this one was a lot of fun. A bunch of us really enjoyed it. It was a little bit more smuttier than we were anticipating, but we didn't mind that at all. This is actually the first book. There's going to be a second companion book called Duke Actually that's coming out next year. And it was a lot of fun. Um, it takes place in New York, but it also takes place in her country. I almost said Genovia, but it's very similar. It felt Princess Diary, Eldovia. Um, it takes place in both places, and it was just a really fun, sweet, romantic Christmas holiday read that made me want all of the hot chocolate. And then I read Alex Six through Kindle Unlimited. And guys, I have been like, the, my eyes have been on this book for a while. I've had it on my wish list for a really long time. And one day the author had shared out that it was free on Kindle for the weekend. I also didn't realize that it was already on Kindle Unlimited, so I could have gotten it anyways. But it was on Kindle Unlimited. And guys, I did not anticipate picking this book up. I had other reading plans. I was already in the middle of another book. And I picked this one up and I binge read this book. I gave it four and a half stars. It is twisted. It is sick. <laughs> it reminds me of Verity and you if they had a baby. Um, this was so intense and such a page turner and I couldn't put it down. I do see that people probably have problems with it but for me it was just exactly what I needed and I really enjoyed it. Then I read One More for Christmas by Sarah Morgan. I gave this one four stars. I've read a Christmas book by her for the past three years. This is my third one, and this isn't my favorite one by her, but it was still a very solid read. I gave it four stars. Very fun for Christmas. Like an entire pile of books all around me. Then I read The Right Player by Candy Steiner. I did read this on my Kindle because I had this through Kindle Unlimited. Um, and again, like I said, my Kindle was kind of really what was keeping me engaged, so I decided to pick this one up there, even though I had a physical copy. This is Candy Steiner. I gave her five stars. This is kind of the companion to The Wrong Game, which I loved, and I think that The Wrong Game is still my favorite compared to The Right Player, but very solid. Love the romance. Love the football element. Um, I don't typically love famous guy pretending to not be famous so the girl can love him for him, but... It's still really enjoyable, and I give it five stars. Um, then I read The Chicken Sisters by KJ Del Antonia, and this book was the Reese's um, book club pick for December. Um, and I already actually had this on my wish list. I already wanted to get this when it came out anyways, and then it was a book of the month choice, and then I really had to have it, and then it was a Reese's pick on top of it, so it was just like my dream come true. Um, I ended up giving this one four stars. It's a contemporary about two sisters who have some family drama and they work for competing chicken joint restaurants and they're going to be on a reality show trying to figure out whose chicken restaurant is better. Drama, fun, 
little over the top, but I still gave it four stars. Then another book that I read through Kindle Unlimited, but I own a physical copy of, was Temptation on Ocean Drive. Again, like I said, the Kindle book was what was really getting me to continue reading. Um, and so I decided to pick this one up. And this is the second book to um, Love on Beach Avenue. And this series just isn't doing it for me. This should do it for me because it's literally about women like three sisters who own a wedding company and I should love it but for some reason these romances just aren't doing it for me and I love Jennifer Probst but for some reason the series just isn't cutting it it's coming off cheesy this was very slow burn I was over 100 pages and literally there was no kiss scene and I just they plan a Dr. Seuss wedding and as much as they were like we're doing it classy it just felt cheesy and I just I don't know. It just isn't doing it for me. The series is not doing it for me. And I don't know if I want to pick up book three, but like I kind of need it to fill out my collection. We'll see how I feel when that comes out. Then um, I read Disney Interviews by Lou Mangello. This is my nonfiction for the month. Um, my husband bought this for me for um, Christmas um, because this is a guy that he listens to his podcast and sometimes I listen to his podcast and we thought this would be really fun. He interviews like Julie Andrews and Marty Sklar and Alice Davis and Richard Sherman and just really important people and it's basically just his interviews that he's done on the podcast but like typed out. Um, really enjoyable, really fun. Um, it is literally word for word from the podcast. So if you listen to the podcast, you might not like this one or because it's literally taken straight from the podcast, there are some major typos and things and that kind of took me out of the story every now and then. Still a really fun read. If you love Disney and you love people that really helped make Disney magic, you're going to love this book. But yeah, I read that one. Then I read Love and Olives by Jenna Evans Welch. Um, I had this one as one of my pre-orders. Basically, at the end, if you notice, a lot of these were books that I had pre-ordered, and I was trying to fit them in to beat my goals. Um, this is the third book to Love and Gelato, Love and Luck, Love and Olives. Um, this one takes place in Greece. Our main character, she just finished her junior year of high school. She's about to go into her senior year, but she's wanting to enjoy summer with her boyfriend who's about to go to college, but she gets a letter, a postcard from her dad who she hasn't seen since she was eight saying, come see me in Greece. He's been, he basically left the family to go find Atlantis and he thinks he's finally found proof of where Atlantis is. So she has to go over to Greece. There's a love story. It's a little too long, but I gave it four stars. It was really cute. I cried my eyes out. Daddy, daughter, like, not daddy daughter romances, that's gross. Daddy daughter storylines always get me. So that one was four stars. And the last book of 2020 was Close Up by Amanda Quick. This is the fourth book in the Burning Cove series. Book five comes out next May. Um, this is a historical fiction, and I thought this one was a lot was a lot of fun. I didn't really like book three, so I was a little nervous going into this one, but I ended up giving this one four stars. I enjoyed it. It was a huge page turner. The pages flew faster than I could think they would. So those are all the books that I read for the past three months. Let me know what you've been reading down below if you've read any of these and your thoughts, and I will see you guys really soon. Bye, everybody.